beautiful beaters. It's Gina from orchidandopal.com and today we're going to be making the sea star necklace using the quadrilentals or quadratiles and checkmates two whole triangles. You'll also need some size 15O and size 11O seed beads. Exact quantities and all materials will be listed and linked down below as usual. You can get all the beads you need and findings and all your supplies at eurekacrystalbeads.com. In fact, I was inspired to create this design based on some of their quadrilental quadratile mixes that they have on their site. Here's an example of the green variety, which is called Botanica. Here's an example of their purple variety, called wisteria and in the necklace i am going based on the tan colored mix that they have called beachside it's a great way to play around with quadrilental and quadratile beads the four hole beads without committing to a whole bunch of one color and at the time that i'm filming this video the mixes are on sale for only a dollar 75 so i will link to those down below too because i think this necklace and components are especially fun when you mix and match the different beads and then put them all together you can see in this green and tan example, I used many different colors that came in the Botanica mix and put them with coordinating triangle beads. And we're gonna do the same today. We're gonna be making this variety in this blue, brown, and tan combination. And we're gonna be making the remaining star together today so you can see how to make those components. Once you know how to do that, you can just put them together using some small jump rings. You can use them in all different types of components. You can use just one as a pendant, as you can see here. You can make these into earrings and even put them together and wear them as a bracelet. So it's a really flexible design. And once you know how to make one C star, it's just a matter of picking out colors and deciding how you wanna put it together. Now, each of these stars takes approximately three feet of beading thread. I'm gonna go ahead and thread my needle with my 0 0.006 inch diameter or six pound fire line, which is my go-to thread, but you use whatever you're comfortable with. Then I'll clean off my surface and we will get started. All right guys, so I just need one more of these brown stars to finish out the front of this necklace. So I've laid out all the beads I'm gonna be using today and we're gonna start out with our size 15O seed beads here in the center, as well as our triangles and our quads. Now you can either use the quadrilental rounds or you can use the quadratiles, either one will work. And here's a close-up example of the quadratiles, the squares inside if you're curious as to what that would look like. And we're gonna start out by first making the center of our star. In order to do that, we want to pick up one of our triangle beads, and I'm gonna be going through the top right hole. Now, it doesn't matter at this point which hole you go through first, except that you need to make sure you go through the same hole for the next five triangles that you pick up. So I'm gonna go through the top right, I'm gonna pick up one 15 -0, then a quad, and it doesn't matter what hole, pick up another 15 -0, another triangle, I'm going through the top right again, a 15-0, a quad, a 15-0, another triangle, pull these down a little bit, another 15-0, quad, 15-0, triangle, 15-0, quad, 15-0, triangle, 15 -0 quad, and finally wrapping up with a 15 -0. We're gonna pull all these down, and you can see this is what you should have. We want five of each type of bead alternating. You'll wanna leave yourself about a six inch tail that you can weave back in later. We're gonna swing our needle around and make this into a loop. So swing around and go through the triangle, seed bead, quad, seed bead, and then through the next triangle, just like that. Go through the same holes that you went through before. This is just going to bring everything together into a loop, just like that. Now for the center of our star, we want these triangles to actually be facing inward. So you want those points to eventually all point inside this little circle instead of pointing out. 
So that's something to keep in mind with the next step. I'm coming out of this hole of the triangle as I'm facing it, it's on the left. I'm gonna go through the other hole in the opposite direction, which is now on my right, the way that I'm holding it, and pull. And we're gonna start going around this ring again and placing 15 O's in between each of these beads on the other side. And again, making sure that all the triangles face inside the circle and all of these quads are going to be leaving two empty holes on the outside of the circle, the outside of the loop. So take your time with this, just to make sure you're going through the right holes. It's easy to get distracted, even I did too, when I was making these up and I'd go through the wrong ones. So just pay attention to where you're going and you'll be okay. So coming out of this other hole on my triangle, going in the opposite direction, I'm gonna pick up another 15 -0. And I'm gonna go through the next quadrilental here, which is going to be on the bottom right. So you can see I have a 15-0 on the bottom left. I want one on the bottom right, so we have two empty holes on the outside of this new beaded ring. And pull that. Now coming out of this hole, I'm gonna be picking up another 15-0 and going through the empty hole of the triangle, again, making sure it's pointed inside the circle just like that, pull and pop that 15-0 into place in between those two beads. Gonna pick up another 15-0, go through the bottom right of this next quad, leaving the two empty holes on the outside or the upper level. There we go, and this really is the most challenging part is just getting this inner ring situated. And I feel like once that's done, then it's a whole lot easier. All right, so I picked up another 15-0. I'm gonna go through the empty hole of this triangle and pull and repeat. We're almost to the other side to go through this last triangle. So I have my 15 0 I'm going through the triangle, and then I'm going to go through also the next 15 0 and then the next quadrilental. There we go. So now you should have something like this where you have a 15-0 in between each of these beads on this inner ring on both sides. And now we're ready to move on to the upper level and work on the points of our star. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pop on a needle onto this tail thread and I'm gonna weave mine back in just to get it out of the way. Feel free to do that too or you can wait till the end. I will be right back. All right, so let's begin with our next level. We're going to need to hop up here to our outer holes of our quad. So I'm just gonna go right up to the next one above where my thread was coming out. You can see I'm working on the left-hand side of my quad right now. So I'm gonna pick up another triangle and I'm gonna go through the left-hand hole of the triangle with the point facing up. Then I'm going to pick up two of my 11 O seed beads and I'm going to pick up another triangle, same thing, going through the left hand hole with the point facing up. With those on my needle, I'm then going to go through the left hand hole of the next quad that I get to and pull. And we're going to pop those in the same way all the way around. So picking up another triangle, left-hand hole, then two 11 O's, and another triangle, and then going through the top left hole of the next quad that I get to. There we go. And just repeat the same thing.
and keep pulling that as tight as you can within reason. And I've got one section left to do. So I'm gonna go through the next quad as well as the next triangle, the same left-hand side hole and pull that. And you should have something that looks like this so far. You've got 11 O's going around two in between each of those sections. And then we need to work on popping in 11 O's on the other side. So we're gonna switch directions and I'm gonna go through the other hole of the same triangle that we're currently coming out of. I'm also going to go through the quad, the empty hole, and the empty hole of the next triangle that we get to. Now you can go through all those at once if you can. If you can't, just go through as many at a time as you can get through. But we want to be going in the opposite direction and positioned so that we can continue on with those 11 O's. Now I'm going to turn my piece because it's a little bit easier for me to work this way and now we're just going to fill in all those empty spots so pick up two 11 l's and then go through the empty hole of the next triangle the quad and the triangle after that and pull and then repeat two more 11 o's going through the triangle the quad and the triangle and those are your last remaining empty holes on all those multi-hole beads. So now they will be all pulled together. And repeat that step again. And now I just have one more spot to fill. So I'm gonna pick up my two 11 O's and I'm gonna go through the triangle, the quad, and the triangle. And this time I'm gonna go also through the two 11 O's that I get to after that. Pull. And hold that with your thumb and your forefinger and pull it nice and tight. And you should be coming out of your 11 O right there. We're gonna complete the points of our triangles. So we will need our 15 O's back again. And if you're using a different color 11 O, you can go ahead and pull those in too. You can see in this example, this is where the 11 O is gonna go that we're working on. And you can either use the same color you did down here or use a different color, totally up to you. So we need to pick up five 15 O's. then one 11 o, then five more 15 o's and that's what you should have on your needle five one and five and then you're going to cross over the top of this peak and you're not going to go through the two 11 o's on the same side that you're currently on you're going to go diagonally through the other two 11 o's on this side going in the same direction down through those two and that's going to cross over the peak and repeat that step all the way around so again pick up five 15 o's one 11 o and five more 15 o's currently coming out of the 11 o's on this side so i want to go down through the two 11 O's on the opposite side. And pull, and there we go. And these will stay in place once we move on to the next step. Right now, you're just gonna have these little loops going around and you'll see how it all comes together. So repeat that step all the way around and I'm gonna speed it up while I do that. Okay, so here's where we left off and I'm coming out of these two 11 O's here 
And now we need to cross back over and create more of a pointed effect on each of these peaks of our star. So let's pick up five more 15 O's. And then you're gonna go through the 11 O that's there at the top of the peak. Pull, pick up three more 11 O's. And swing back around and go through the same 11 0 you're coming out of, just in the opposite direction. And pull. That's what you have so far. And pick up five more 15 0s to complete this peak. And to do that, you're going to go down through these other two 11 O's on the other side, pull and you get that kind of an X effect over the top of the peak and that finishes out your star really nicely. So let's do one more together. Let's pick up five 15 O's and go through the 11 O at the peak and pick up three more 15 O's Swing back around, going through the same 11 O in the opposite direction. Pull. Pick up five more 15 O's. And then go through these other two 11 O's down here and pull. And that's exactly what you do all the way around. Once again, I'm gonna speed it up and finish that off and we'll meet back. guys so we're putting in our last 15 O's to finish up this outer embellishing of our stars and that is all there is to it our star is complete so now all you need to do is tie and knot off your thread I'm just gonna make a little half hitch knot right there on the other side of those two 11 O's I'm gonna move through a few more beads and make another one and I'm good with about three knots worth so go ahead and do that Just hiding your thread as best that you can in between the beads as you go around. There we go. And I'm just gonna go through my final couple of beads, pull that and clip off my thread carefully. And now we can put it all together. So I brought these components back in and I am connecting these with one point of the star at the top and then connecting these arms that are on the left and right of the star, leaving two free points at the bottom and it drapes really nicely. I already have a jump ring coming out of the right hand side of this star. I'm gonna open that up and attach it to this side of the star we just made. Just going through that tiny loop with the three 15 seed beads. And this fire line is really strong. That's something I really appreciate about that type of thread. Plus, there's not gonna be a huge amount of pulling at these points. So as long as you're not too forceful with it, the necklace will be fine. Now I'm opening up another jump ring. I'm gonna put it again, just in that little loop with the three 15 O's on the other side of my star. And you might have to wiggle that a little bit to get it in there. And I'm just going with the smallest jump rings I could find. I actually think these are like three millimeter in diameter. You can always make your own jump rings out of wire too, but four millimeter would be okay if that's all you can find. 
and close that up by twisting it back. There we go. And I'm gonna add my final jump ring and then we'll be able to attach our chain. And the beauty of doing these kinds of designs is that you can make the chain any length that you want. So it is adjustable and you don't use as many beads when you don't have a full beaded necklace. So that's also a benefit. I already have this jump ring open, so I'm gonna go through this side of my chain and close that up. You can see I already have my lobster clasp and everything in place. I was prepared and I'm gonna open up this side like that and pop it on that end of our chain and close that up and we are done with our necklace. So here's what it looks like all said and done. It looks great from all sides and so much fun to use all different color combinations. Don't forget to check out eurekacrystalbeads.com. Again, all links for everything, materials, as well as specific quantities will be down below the video. And they've got so many different color options. You're sure to find some things that speak to you. And if you don't want to make a full five-star necklace, you can just use one as a pendant, just like that. Not to mention some coordinating earrings and a bracelet if you'd like. I want to give you guys a huge thank you for being with me today. I hope this tutorial was helpful and fun for you to watch and enjoy. Please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you gave this a try and if it worked out for you or anything else you'd like to say. I hope you'll stick around for much more to come, more tutorials, unboxing, lots of inspiration, and all kinds of beading fun. Until next time, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And as always, happy beading. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. For more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can check out the information section below this video for links to all my social media handles, recommended products, and my shop and blog at orchidandopal.com. Thanks for watching.